The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, guys. Uh, welcome to the 3D CAD and uh, CAM uh, portion of this live event. Um, I'm Darren, one of the top CAD trainers here. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Can uh, everybody hear me okay? Just tell me a quick text or something up there. Cool. All right, so a couple of things we're going to get out of the way here first. So, uh, again, I'm going to be working in a uh, in version 34. I'm not going to go over the new stuff in there, but if you guys uh, are running 31 to um, uh, 31 to 34, you're going to be good with everything. Uh, again, like I said, I'm not going to go through all the new stuff that's in each version or anything. I'll just keep it as simple as possible. Uh, also, let's uh, go ahead. I'm going to jump on our... Uh, Website here, bobcat.com. Get through some administrative stuff here, and then we'll get into the software here. Uh, a couple of things I want to show you here. Training. We just, yeah, I've been saying this all week, uh, everything, every day. It seems like we are traveling. So if you guys want us to come out to your place, we'll be glad to. Uh, we are running seminars all around the U.S. and everything. We got coming, We just got done with one in Louisville. We've got uh, Charlotte coming up on the uh, 15th. Of December uh, so again if you guys want to you know come out to Charlotte and we also got next year's schedule uh, up there mostly too we got uh, Oldsmar in our hometown here um, in January and then we got Vegas coming up in February just kind of give you an idea of that but uh, again we got um, on the 15th to the 17th we got Charlotte coming up in December uh, and then we got our, you know, the rest of the year up and everything um, on there. So, um, yeah, just uh, go ahead and check that out. It's on our website under training, training seminars. Uh, we're also, again, we're also doing uh, on-sites where we come out to you. Uh, you guys, we also do an in-houses where you guys come down to Florida. Uh, we'll train you specifically on what you guys are doing and everything. Uh, we're also doing uh, online training still also. So if you got that on your account. Uh, some hours, go ahead and give us a call. We'll get you signed up or scheduled on the, for some online training there. Also, we have our support site that's changed a lot here. Actually, if you go to bobcatsupport.com, that's a direct address. Uh, but you can get through it uh, through our main website by going to bobcat.com, hovering over support, and then clicking on support site. Uh, so this is our new look for everything here. Again, you got to sign up. Uh, if you do have a sign in, um, it should be good. But if you're running difficulties uh, logging in, give our tech guys a call, and they'll be able to switch you over and everything, get you um, the uh, right account level and everything. So uh, there's been a couple of glitches. In fact, it happened to me uh, at one point too. Let's see if it'll let me log in today. Nope, not going to let me log in. So I'm not going to worry about it because actually the stuff I want to show you is not on our, you know, you don't have to log into it. Um, Tech support, great resource where you can submit tickets if you want, getting uh, set up, uh, checking for updates, all that in there. So there's all our updates and everything, 34, uh, we're on 42.54, 33, we're at uh, 39.75, 32 is 36.13, and 31 is at 32.81. Those are the last builds for each one, except for uh, 34, we got some... Uh, release, a release coming up here uh, at some point uh, for another build. Uh, but again, these are the ones I just gave you, those are the last builds for each one of the um, softwares there for 31, 32, and 33. Um, and there, you know, we also got SolidWorks, Rhino, and our machinist toolbox in there. And again, if you guys want, you can submit tickets through here also uh, on that. You got our uh, knowledge base where you can find out any questions if you need to, uh, if it's just something that you need to find out real quick. And this is updated uh, periodically, pretty much every day. Uh, they got a question in there. Um, oh, <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Um, actually, the yeah, my uh, dad actually finally retired. <laughs> so he's enjoying life uh, doing whatever he does. <laughs> but I appreciate that. Thanks, Mark. Uh, um, but, yeah, we got all our um, uh, knowledge base here and everything. Uh, post-processors. We got our, um, again, you can uh, download a post-processor here uh, and everything. This is getting started with our post-processors. 
uh, and everything, questions and answers right there. Um, let's see. And again, you don't have to really have uh, login information for all this stuff. Um, I'll get to your question there in a second, Mark. Um, just put in your customer ID, um, what version you're running, um, you know, what um, machine type are you running, um, and what kind of post you want to use on there. What's your controller? That's what we're looking for is the controller that you're using. Um, I went through this last week with a guy. He was giving me his machine, and I was kind of – I knew the machines, but then I said, you know, what kind of controllers are they running? And then, and then we finally got it. It was, either, it was both a mock, and it was running for Nooks also. So uh, make sure you, make, you know your controller mate. If you need to, uh, you can uh, set up for a uh, – P uh, post modifications and stuff. Uh, you can also send in for a post request also. Just a link to post request real quick because there's two di different ones that you can check out. Submit one through the web base. Again, you can just fill out all the information right on the web here um, and then submit everything in there. We're going to need, you know, sample programs, can cycles if you need them. Uh, on there, we'll need to know that information. We're going to need a list of GNM codes from your uh, machine. Uh, we're also going to need a sample program or two, if you guys can provide that all with us. Um, regardless if we got the GNM codes for that specific machine, we want to keep a file for you guys uh, set up. So in case there's any modifications that we don't have to sit there and go around uh, trying to find this stuff um, on there. So, And then we got our training where basically you got all your getting started. I'm not going to be able to log into this one because you got to have a, a support level for this. And Apparently my sign is not working. Uh, you got your getting started videos and your virtual training video events, uh, training professors. And you can see here if you don't have, uh, if you're not signed in or you don't have your uh, proper account level set, you're going to get this in there. Call your sales right there um, on that. So um, any questions or anything so far? And uh, the answer Mark's question, not going to take over. He actually sold everything <laughs> up there. Um but it is what it is on there. Uh, he is a better carpenter or woodsmith than I am. I can barely put two sticks together, basically. Um, on that. Um, also, we got here, if you go to forum.bobcad.com, we got our uh, forum here. Again, it's a uh, free uh, sign up and everything. You can go ahead and uh, ask questions. You can answer questions. Uh, you'll get answers from not only us in the uh, office here down in Tampa, Florida, but you also get guys around the world uh, there. One of the guys there, I think he's from Austria, I believe, or Switzerland, uh, one of those Balkan countries down there. Uh, real good guy. Uh, he's always on there, uh, you know, asking questions and then, um, you know, giving answers to the other guys too and chatting back and forth with everybody. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah so with that and today you know um i guess it's because of the holidays coming up or if uh our al sent out good emails we got about 51 of you guys in here today um so and not everybody's gonna and that's how many people signed up uh and everything but uh there's about 30 of you guys in here right now which is pretty good uh, on there, and then that's going to go up and down all day. Um, so, um, again, working in Bobcat 34, just kind of take you, I'm not going to go through all the tabs today, uh, pretty much, hopefully you guys know all that. I'm going to uh, go to file, pretty much, uh, go through a little bit of that here. So we got new, open, save, save as. If you use open, uh, we always default it to a Bobcat file, but if there's something that you want to uh, open specifically, SolidWorks bar file, um, let's see, um, st stat file, step file, that kind of stuff, you can open that up. No, uh, the answer to Mark's question, no, definitely not star power on that one. <laughs> I'll, we'll go with that, though. That's good. Thanks, man. Um, so, yeah, you can open up different... Um, uh, file types from here. Um, by default, it's, uh, let me see, it's going to go back in there. It's going to open up the recent files here. Again, default number down here for recent files is 25. 
Uh, again, you can set that up to whatever you want it to be. I haven't changed mine. Uh, user profile, depending if you're working 33 or uh, below, it's going to be a little bit different than 34. They changed that up a little bit. Uh, on there, you can change your basically your border of your um, software there. Uh, I think by default, it is classic on there. So you can go ahead and change it. You can have multiple uh, different layouts for everybody, uh, not only yourself, but if anybody else is using it also. Uh, settings, I'm just going to jump right in here, and then I'll jump back in there. Um, for 34, the user interface is right here now. Uh, 33 and below, it's all on the user uh, profile there um, on that. So here you got your directories for general, for you know where 34's data folder is, the cam features. Uh, backups and, and where they're located at, autosave, keyboard and mouse functions, 3D mouth uh, there. Yeah, we'll definitely go over that there, Mark. Yeah, definitely. You know, And if you guys have been in with uh, Mark, what Mark Nassin is going through, um, uh, setting up a tool crib and everything, I do spend a little extra time on that if you guys have ever been with me, in two, even in 2D and then uh, 3D. Um, in 4-axis, I believe. Any of my classes, I actually spend a little, uh, a little extra time on the uh, tool cribs there because I do I do like the tool cribs a lot. Uh, they do help uh, not only myself, but they'll help you guys out too. Uh, but, yeah, we'll definitely yeah, we'll talk about that a little, a little extra there, Mark. Uh, again, we got our keyboard functions there. Um, you'll hear me say a lot of times, uh, tab, hit your tab key, hit your tab key. Doesn't matter what training you're in. Um, but if you're used to, you know, um, the old school way, hit and enter. That's what this is for. Enter equals tab on there. Um, then you got your zoom to cursor, invert scroll wheel. Basically what the invert scroll wheel is by default, if you're rolling, using your mouse wheel there on your mouse, uh, you're rolling away. The part's actually moving in. But if you click on this invert scroll wheel, it's actually moving in towards you when you roll your mouse wheel in towards you. If you have a 3D mouse capability or you have 3D Connect mouse, you can uh, definitely use that um, on there. Um, it just allows you to navigate and float around uh, in the CAD screen a little bit more. And there's shortcut keys on a lot of them that you can uh, utilize also. Um, also, we got this data collection. Um, now, I think when you first open up the software, it will prompt you um, that you, you know, we're going to be collecting information CAD and CAM side of everything. We have no clue who you are in the world, uh, where you're at, what you do, everything. We have no clue. We just know that you clicked on a button and we're picking up that statistic on there. So if there's a function that, you know, may be on the fence of either staying or going, um, you could be the tipping point of that um, on there. So uh, we just picking up stats on it of, you know, how many times a person uh, clicks on certain buttons on there. Uh, because I'm one of the trainers here, I just turn mine off because uh, I do hit all the buttons and I don't want to skew them uh, for whatever reason uh, on there. But it's up to you. Again, it's anonymous. We have no clue who you are and where you're at in the world um, on there. And then, again, again, our user interface, our CAM uh, tree out layout. That, again, that's for 34. I won't go too much into that. Our customized ribbons here, so if you're running 32 or 30, uh, between 32 and 34, you'll be able to customize your ribbon. So if there are certain things you don't use as far as uh, what's in the tabs and then the ribbons here, you can get rid of them. Uh, shortcut keys, we follow Microsoft's uh, shortcuts uh, there. Control M for new, Control O for open. Um, again, I made one here for select mode, control G, so I don't have to either go to uh, my home tab and click on the uh, select icon or the one on my document toolbar here. And then we got our current and default documents here where we can change our units, our display. On there, you can see I made my, uh, again, I'm with, I'm on this all day long, so I want a little darker scheme, a little easier on the eyes. Um, on there, and you can change all your other colors also if you need to. Uh, also, you can show or hide your uh, uh, accesses or nomens if you need to. Uh, quality, you can, uh, I jack mine all the way up. It just allows that, you know, if you're got a 2D geometry or a 3D model and you got edges that are kind of like spaced apart, uh, it could be just graphics if you move those all the way to the far right, they'll join back together on there. They are really, it's just a visual thing. 
Uh, and then we got our uh, wireframe sticker line, UCS playing, uh, octagonal veals and sections on there. You got different options for all, each one of those. Uh, the CAD tolerances, snap increments, text. What do you want to see when you go into the text on there? Um, window fonts. We um, use whatever's on your computer. We'll also, um, if you downloaded any uh, true type fonts and imported them and uh, put them in the uh, proper folder. We'll actually pick them up in the Windows folder also. So I think there's a website, uh, 1001 Free Fonts. They got different uh, fun fonts in there that you can tri uh, choose from. And then the Bobcat fonts, we actually designed those ourselves. AFNT01 through 9 are different types of single line fonts along with Helva, which I uh, set up mostly in Gothic also on there. And then you can set, you know, a default height, angle, slant, ratio, and vector uh, text there. Uh, what kind of point style do you want to use? You have those options there. Anything you do either in current documents or default uh, documents here, you can hit apply to whichever one, and it will convert it over to the other side for you so you don't have to sit there and go through each one of them. Again. Uh, dimensions. What do you want to see for dimensions if you're utilizing the dimensions on our screen? Uh, again, I use the Bobcat one. You can use Windows, whatever you want. Hit the drop down, choose one from there. What's text height, decimal places, scaling, extra zeros if you want to use them, tolerances um, on there, witness and uh, dimension lines. Uh, what kind of uh, arrows do you want to use here? You have those different options in there. Again, length and width, in and out, positioning, that kind of stuff. And then the cam side, what's your tolerances for your uh, cam tolerances simulation? And what's your um, default machining order? By This one is looking at individual feature, but you can always change it to uh, individual tool or individual tool per machine setup uh, on there. Again, whatever you do here in current documents, you can always hit uh, apply to default, and it will move everything over to here also. So if you make any changes, again, do that, and then hit Apply and OK, and it should be good to go. Uh, the one last thing I want to show you here is in Help. Uh, if you have any issues with the software crashing, whatever, this is the first place that the, our tech guys are going to be going here. Uh, they'll look at what version you're on, make sure you're on the latest build. Uh, they might go into your system info and make sure your uh, computer is uh lack of better terms, worthy enough to, to run Bobcat. We do recommend, if you're going to run a laptop, uh, even a desktop too, we recommend a computer or a gaming uh, computer system there. Uh, one with a dedicated graphics card. That means if you got, you know, either it's going to have Intel uh, of some sort or AMD as an internal, but the uh, dedicated one should be either an AMD or NVIDIA on there. So make sure you, you got that, especially if you're doing a lot of 3D and then uh, three axis, because we are, it's basically set up for a gaming system now on there. So we need that uh, extra power oomph in there. Also up here, we got our uh, health topics here. Um, let me move it over here. So, again, this one's updated, uh, you know, by our development team periodically. You can search whatever you want. If you know specifically where you want to go, you can, you know, choose that from there. Let's go create 3D. And then I know it's in the Boolean section, maybe advanced holes or, you know, one of the Booleans, maybe a subtract. And then uh, it will definitely have, you know, different animations in there. You know, this one's showing add, subtract, and intersect uh, in there. So, again, great resource to also uh, look also on there. Not only that, our tech guys are uh, be glad to help you out a lot, too. Um, so with that, let's jump over to Create 3D here tab. So here's all your tabs up here if you got them all set up in here. Uh, so we're going to be looking through the Create 3D here. The first thing we're going to look at is our uh, primitives here. Um, the yeah um actually al's been um he's got a lot going on there um yeah i'll definitely have to <laughs> yeah come to think about it i haven't seen him on uh line too much uh uh but definitely i will uh get with him and um start telling him to put some more stuff up on the uh web there <laughs> thanks um so 
uh, primitive here. So again, we got with the uh, cube, cylinder, sphere, cone, and torus here. So, you know, in here, I'm going to look at an isometric view, just doing a control seven uh, on my keyboard. Again, I can change, you know, my uh, length and width and my height here. I can change my origin from center or bottom left here uh, on that. I can take this node. I can move it around the screen. I can take the arrows and I can adjust them if I want to freeform something uh, on there. Um, I'll get to that question there in a second there, Mark. Um, so, yeah, I can definitely do that. Or I can come up here and just type in what I want. You know, I'm just going to average everything out here. Let's go uh, 3.5, something like that. And then I can just click OK, and there's my solid on there. And, again, I can move this around. I can set it in origin X, Y, and Z if I need to. Uh, same thing with the uh, cylinder here. I can uh, take this and I can place it, you know, uh, let's see, I'm just going to put it right about here. And I'm going to move it up in Z, let's say one inch. Oops, let's, let's make you six inches. That should be good. And I'm just looking at different views here because, yeah. And I can make the diameter. Um, now, again, 34 here, I'll just uh, tell you this real quick, you got diameter and radius is now in 34, so in 33 and below, it's only going to be radius. Uh, so if I did want to make that any bigger or smaller, I would have to use the uh, radius on there. But you also have an option in 34 to use uh, diameter now. So I can do something like that. Uh, just to, you know, kind of make something out here real quick, and I'm kind of zooming in and zooming out real quick on there. <laughs> Also, we got, you know, like our uh, cone here. So let's see, again, top radius, uh, bottom radius, I'm going to go, let's say, 1 and 0, just kind of invert it there. The height, actually, I'm going to leave alone uh, on there. Yeah, that should be good. And I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to come up here to sphere and, let's say, come up 2 inches. Let's go diameter, um, uh, let's see, 1.5 here. That should be good. There we go. Well, okay, that. And then Taurus, we got our major and minor radius. Major's outside, minor's the inside there. So, again, you, you got to set it up the way you need to. You can, uh, let's say, 0.5. You can see what it just did there for the minor. I didn't do anything with the major um, on there. So you got different looks here with the uh, primitive. Now, with this, you can come over here if you need to for whatever reason, and we can use one of the Boolean sections. If you hit the drop down, you got your option to choose from. If you choose the icon, you can go from the type in here. So, like, add. I'm just going to window select over these three, and I'm going to add those two together, or all three of them there. And then cancel, and I'm just going to go into select mode. So you can see there, I got something like that. Same thing with the uh, subtract in here. Uh, I'm going to pick my main body, what I want to uh, keep. Um, get to your question there in a second there, Mark. And then it'll drop down to what you need to get rid of. So I'm going to get rid of that cylinder. I can show a preview if I wanted to. And if I like it, you know, just by rolling around, everything looks good. I can go ahead and say OK and then cancel from there. Uh, let's see. Um, to answer your first question there, uh, the, the, the make a sprocket tape, I might. Um, I usually do that in a 2D one, so I'll probably hold off on that one there, Mark, for the sprockets. Um, with our sprocket, um, yeah, I'll, I'll show you guys that, but I won't go too far into that one. Uh, let's see, try adding the fillet in the in between the uh, ball and the torus. You mean right in here? So if I go solid fillet here, I should be able to, I'm going to grab that edge. You don't want to select the either side there. Um, I can show a preview. And looks like I got, yeah, it looks like I got a nice radius in there. Again, I didn't change that uh, on there. So, yeah, you could definitely use it, and you, you're kind of ahead of the game there on that. 
Um, but actually, I was going to do it on this here, but this works too. Uh, again, I didn't do anything special. I'm going to change that to 35, and I'm going to say all geometry. And you'll notice in here, I'm going to hit X all just to make sure. Yeah, that's too big. Oh, 35. Let me go um, 0.35. That might make a difference. There we go. Instead of uh, 35, I did a 0.35 now. So, yeah, you can see definitely it does let us do that on there. And, again, you could do the same thing with edges on the, in the inside there. I can just hit OK. Um, if you're going to do something in the bottom half, you don't have. You should just be able to pick the uh, bottom floor uh, in there instead of the edge. It'll make it a little bit easier. Again, I didn't. Uh, I just love to add 35.35 um, on there. So again, that's using the solid fillet there. And again, you can do the same thing with chamfer and uh, variable fillet here. Uh, variable fillet allows a radius with an end radius on there. So. Let's see, I'm going to choose just this edge right here just to show you. So there goes my edge. It's going this direction. Uh, so that's my radius, and my end radius is at zero. And, again, I can put that whatever I need it to also. Uh, same thing with chamfer here. You know, I got my chamfer width. Uh, again, I'm just choosing. Oops, let me say okay. Always confirm what you're doing there also. Um on that you can see with my preview I'm not gonna I'm gonna hide the preview here and there goes my chamfer also and I just left it whatever the default number is on there yeah um, and to answer your question there there is a direction on there but usually there's not a way to, with that variable fill Mark's question was is there a, a way to see the direction on there basically no there's not um, really um, so with the variable fill in here, um, if I choose this, actually it depends on where you clicked it on your mouse on there. That's your direction on there. I, didn't, I never even thought about that. That was a good question there, Mark, um, on there. So I'm going to hit cancel on here and go back into variable fill it. So basically, like I'm going to take this line for example. Wherever you click that line, that's where your start is, and then the end's going to be on the opposite side for the variable fill it only. So if I click down here, my radius should show up down here. Now if I did it the opposite direction, going this way. So that to answer your question, it is on depending on where you pick and start. Uh, it has to be at least past the halfway mark on there. I'm just exaggerating, going right to the intersection. So I kind of answer your question there. But that, no, that was a good question on that one. <laughs> cool. Um, so any questions or anything so far with uh, any of the solids here? Then then using the boolean and uh, any of the uh, cornering features so far. <clears throat> and if you guys have been with me, no, uh, you know, if you guys don't answer, no news is good news for you on there. All right, so the next thing we're going to look at is our extrusions here. So I got a couple ones in here I'm going to open up. So I'm going to go to recent files and uh, do, 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 do. yeah, there we go. So I just kind of made these up here um, earlier. So uh, you can see here I got a part file that I want to extrude up, but I want different extrusions here. So the two things I kind of want to show you is extrude boss and extrude curve. They're both the same, uh, but the differences are the extrude boss. If you got multiple solids that you're doing, they will join them together uh, and basically boss them together um, on there. Or you use extrude curve, which will keep each one of those solids separate, and then you just bully them. It's just an extra step or two you got to take um, on there. I like to use extrude curve personally, um, but we're going to do it this way here. Um, so first thing I want to do, I got this 2D geometry here. Uh, I'm going to look at it here, and I already know what I need to do. I basically want 
this right here, this circle, and then following that profile. And I'm going to do an extrusion going in one direction, and then I'm going to do an extrusion going in another direction uh, with just a circle. But because this is a full circle right here, I need to break that. So the easiest way to do that is go under Utilities. I'm going to do Break Many. I'm just going to Window Select over it. And then up on my upper right-hand corner, I can just hit the green egg. So you can see there, it made that break for us. So this is going to make this a little bit easier. I always like to do, when I do the extrusions, to look at it in a um, uh, isometric view here under your document to, uh, toolbar here. If you hit the drop down, you got your ISO view here. I usually do ISO 2 here or Control 7 on your keyboard as a shortcut key. So I'm going to go back here and just to show you the Extrude Boss, what I'm going to do here, and I'm going to be a little particular about this, so I'm going to choose here and I'm going to go across here just to kind of get my levels here. I'm going to hold my Shift key down on this end. So I got that, and then I'm going to select here, here, and then come across to here. So you can see I got a full spot right here. If I come over here to my data entry here, I got one inch in the positive Z direction. Again, I can change, I can use my arrows there, I can move my node if I want. I'm just going to do everything off the data entry here. So I'm going to make that zero. And then, you know what, we'll just leave it at 1 for here. We're not worried about draft or anything. That should be good. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. Now, with the Extrude Boss, again, I'm just going to come out to my, uh, I'm going to come over here to my CAD screen here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to suppress that solid that we made. Or I can left-click out in the middle of the CAD screen, hit S as in SAM. It'll shade it out, and it'll achieve what I want also. It just allows me to be able to pick my geometry here. Whoops. I'm going to hit the X all because I made a... There we go. So I got my circle here. Again, I'm going to move this back up to, I'm, I'm just doing one inch here, and I'm not even worried about extru any of the holes yet or anything. We'll get to that one here in a second. I just kind of want to show you uh, what the, each one of these does here. So I'm going to unsuppress this one. Now you see, just made it one solid there, which could be good in some sense because then I don't have to do the other um, things there. Uh, but if I want, I'm going to undo these. <laughs> Extrude Curve is going to allow me to, let me just go ahead and select this real quick. Again, I'm going to do the same thing at one inch. That should be fine. I'm going to come out here and hit S on my keyboard. So now I can select 2D geometry. And I'm just going to select, just single select everything because it's real quick and easy. And I'm going to make you one inch and I'm going to make that zero. Say OK, cancel. Now I'm going to left click out in the middle of the CAD screen, hit S again. Go up to my document toolbar. And you can see there now, if I need to make any adjustments to this one or this one, I could do that um, on there. Um, also, I'm going to undo those. If I do an extrude co uh, curve or boss, I can window select over everything. Now, because the way this is made, I'm going to get this because it does not know exactly where to go. So that's where I have to do something like... Let's select you to here. We're doing the same thing over and over again here. Just kind of get a better idea. And it will probably be easier if I just... Now if I select all the holes here, now I don't have to make that extra step in creating the uh, holes which I could do. 
on there. So I don't have to make that extra step in there. Now, the other thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the extrude curve. Again, now I'm just going to set my parameters up already here, zero. And I'm going to hit S on my keyboard. Now I'm going to chain select around here. And you can see how it's kind of getting a little bit tricky here. I could do something like that. So you can kind of play around with the extrusions on there. Um, let's see. Uh, was there something? No. Okay. So to answer Travis' question there, maybe, um, probably didn't say it right. Um, I didn't do any extrusion on there. When you select, you know, a boundary plus an extra piece of geometry, like in this case, it's going to extrude it automatically. Now, the the pros and cons of all this is that it will, um, it does a through hole, basically, on here. Um, because I set this at zero on here, uh, you notice that this is only going down to that zero mark because I got it set at uh, zero, zero plank. You can see the holes. Now, if I wanted to do something different with that, which I'm going to get here in a second here i didn't do any extrude uh cut or anything which i'm going to get to here in a second um on that but i'm going to show you this here real quick the extrude surface and then i'm going to undo everything and come back and do this all over again extrude surface allows me to extrude my surface up even further it could be you know whatever direction i want it to be uh and there you can see what it's doing um on there and it's going to follow in either along with the normal or you can do along a z on there so it's going to go up in a z formation uh, so that's with the extrude surface now i'm going to undo all that and again i'm just going to do this whole perimeter piece right here um, so again i'm just going to select my uh, geometry here Not doing anything pretty with this. And again, I'm going to have this come down to, let's, oops, zero, and we'll go 1.5, just for the fun of it, or 1.2, 1, 1, 1. 1.5, if I can learn how to type here. All right, so from there, I can go to extrude cut. Now, with the extrude cut, it makes it easier because, like I said, if you select the holes, along with your um, extrude curve there for the um, whole body, it extrudes it, you know, all the way through. With the extrude cut, this allows me now, again, I'm going to hit S on the keyboard because it's easier. And I'm going to go zero on here, and I'm just going to go 0.75. You see the adjustment there? Now once I click OK and cancel, you can see it only went three quarters of an inch down. So if you need to, um, the extrude cut is really nice to use. If you use it during the extrude boss or extrude curve, it's going to extrude it all the way through. It's not going to allow you to, you know, manipulate that to wherever you want to go on there um, with that. Um, also, other things you could do is um, like this geometry here. Uh, I'm just using it right on one in one plane there, so I'm, you know, going in a positive direction. Um, but for some reason, if you need to, you can always translate uh, utilities, translate. You can translate this up a certain distance if you need to. And I'm going to try, I'm going to be a little tricky here. I'm going to move it up. Um, Let's say two inches in Z. And let's see if the trim two will allow me to. There we go. So you can see I got my main body down here, but I want to extrude this downward. So again, you can kind of manipulate the 2D geometry if you need to um, on there. 
So I just made, you know, did uh, translated most of this all up here, except for the uh, this part right here. And I just trimmed two of those together in there. So now it should be a full circle there just by selecting the geometry. Now I can come over here to create 3D and maybe, let's say, do an extrude. I know it's two inches up. I'm going to go down um, 2.25. Two maybe. Now I'm going to be a little tricky on this one. We'll okay that. And now I'm going to go extrude cut. I'm going to do the inside. And I'm going to go, you know, six inches. Because I want it to cut through all the way. I didn't want this part to be cut all the way through. I only wanted this part on there. So you can see I got that all the way through. And you can see the differences in the material. Now, again, I can come over here to add. Add those two together. And basically, you can see where it's just joined at in there. So now that's all one solid. So you couple different ways of using uh, the extrusions there uh, with that. Um, any questions or anything so far? And again, you can go ahead and, you know, use your, uh, let's see, I'm going to do 0625 uh, just to fill it. And I'm going to do around the edge here. Now this is uh, probably, yep, it did work. Okay, good. So I just picked the edges on there. I made sure I was, I was afraid I hit the 2D geometry because it wouldn't have done anything. That's why I did that show preview here. Everything looks good on that. And again, if I need to make a chamfer, you know, whatever, I can do that. And again, I might want to, you know, 0 0.05 all geometry kind of just make a slight one in here and you might want to um, separate your um, 2d geometry with your um, um, 3d model there so you might want to come over here and I didn't do that with the layers so I can add a new layer so this so and I'm gonna call this one solid and I'm gonna come over here to oops select mode I'm gonna cancel Go back into select mode here, select my geometry. I'm going to right click in the middle of the CAD screen anywhere, go down to modify attributes and layers. I'm going to left click on solid here, click OK. Now you'll notice that's in my solid layer now. And I'm just going to get rid of the 2D geometry because then it'll probably make it a little bit easier for me to um, do my chamfers uh, on there. So. And let's see, I'm going to edit this one. Nope, that's for that one. And I could probably delete that one. And it went back into that layer. So make sure, because it was associated with this layer here. So that was my fault on that. Not a big problem. Again, modify attributes, layers, solid. And then I can probably come in again here and, you know, 05. Now with this, I have to select each geometry individually in here. So if you got a lot of geometry or if you hit S on the keyboard, you could probably choose that a little bit easier in there. And sorry about if you guys hear the AC kick on here. Um, I'm just going to do that for right now. So you can see I can walk that all the way around if I needed to on there. Any questions or anything so far? 
All right, so the next one I'm going to bring up here is, um, again, I'm going to go to file, and I got my draft one here. Real easy here. Um, again, I'm going to look at an isometric view here. Uh, I'm just going to bring everything down. I'm going to use the extrude curve here. Now, I'm going to window select over everything, and then I'm going to not select that. Uh, let's see, I'm going to come down here and one. Now, my draft angle, I'm going to look at this in a front view here so you guys can see it. So my draft, I'm going to go, let's say, 10 degrees. You can see what it did there. 110 degrees on the inside. And I can use also minus 10. And it won't let me, so um, let's see. Let's go minus 2. There we go. Again, that's on the outside now on there. Let's go minus 5, see what it does. There we go. You can see it's kind of drafting outward. So you can use the draft if you want. Negative is going to go on the outside, you know, if you're coming downward. Uh, regular, uh, if you use a positive number, you can see it goes on the inside just like that. So I just used a positive 5, negative 5 in there. You can see what it does. So you can definitely uh, utilize that. Um, again, you're going to kind of have to, you know, figure out which is going to be better for you. Negative 8 is too much. Let's go negative 6. That should be fine. And we can just hit OK, and there we go. Now, the only reason I didn't do the top part on this, again, I'm going to hit S on my keyboard here. I'm going to go to Extrude Curve. And I'm going to choose just that. And we'll go one inch down. Again, I don't have to change this number, but I am anyways. And say OK, because I just wanted a straight wall. I didn't want to do a draft angle. If I would have done a draft angle, uh, if I would have swiped over everything, it would have done a draft angle, uh, even on the inside there. So and I probably got draft angle. Yep, you can see I got draft angles even on the holes there. So, again, I may not want to do that um, on there. I'm not too worried about the holes in here. It's just a drawing I got um, on there. I just wanted to show you the draft angles um, on a solid model and everything. Um, any questions or anything so far? All right. So, yeah, moving on here. Um, so we got our surfaces here. So we got regular surfaces and we got advanced surfaces. Uh, planar surface. This is if you got um, a surface that you just need to make a straight, flat plane across. It could be at an angle. There can't be any radius. It's got to be totally flat. So just to show you here real quick, uh, let's see. Let's go new here. And um, let me do something here real quick. And I'm going to hit save because I actually want to use this later on and that one I'm not too worried about I'll just hit no um, all right so I'm gonna go to create 2d I'm just gonna hit shape library here not gonna do any questions I uh, right now we are at uh, 60 degrees here in Tampa <laughs> so we got a cold front so everybody's bundled up in their parkas and um, Arctic weather gear um, down here. So anybody who lives up north and you get in a cold front, sorry to be a smart aleck about that one. Uh, just when we hit past, you know, 75 degrees, everything pretty much shuts down. Everybody freezes here in, in Florida, basically. <laughs> Bad joke on there. Uh, <laughs> uh, Fahrenheit. It's all in Fahrenheit, so, so whatever that is in Celsius, I'm not sure on that. <laughs> you probably do the math quicker than I can. Um, all right, so, uh, again, I'm just going to do, um, uh, let's see, I'm going to just pick something off the top here um, just to show you. Uh, let's do this one, my chain link. Again, I'm not going to change any parameters on there. So, again, just flat geometry you can see. Um, on there, control seven. Now I'm going to come over here and go to create 3D and planar. Again, if I just window pick over it, 
it creates a surface. It'll create my holes for me if I need to. If I get rid of the um, circle or any one of them, you can see it just makes it one complete. Um, watch a little, yeah, you're probably a little bit colder than I am up there, Travis. <laughs> Not too far the, uh, north of us uh, in there. Um, so yeah, if you, depending on how you select your geometry, you can, you know, either, you know, show a hole or not show a hole in there. So again, with the planer, it's just a flat surface. It, I'm just doing it on uh, Z zero here, but if you have it at an angle or something like that, um, yeah, you could definitely, um, um, work it that way. Now the rest of these on here are different, um, functions and stuff. So let's see for this one here. And just to show you, I'm going to open up a file here. It's going to be a mill turn file. Let's see. Let me go here. 34 examples. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Mill turn one here. So, all right, bear with me here. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to take that solid model. I'm going to copy it, close you down, open up a new window, paste you. Now, what I want to do here, and this is just for the revolve basically here. I'm going to rotate this thing here. Uh, let's see, rotate, like in a lathe uh, portion here. So let's go 90 degrees and Y. And I'm going to come over here to create 2D. I'm going to add a new layer. I'm not going to name it or anything. I'm going to use Spun Profile, Window Select. And this is if, if, if I need to get 2D geometry off of this. So I got my profile here. Um, if I go into Create 3D, I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer here. Um, Let's see, Robert's got a question there, and it's a good one. Uh, can I use a 3D scanner in Bobcat? Um, you can you so you're gonna bring in the, the 3D scan uh, file. If you bring in the 3D scan file in the Bobcat, you can use one um, on there. It's gonna be in a, probably an STL model. Um, just be careful because that STL model um, or 3D scan part is gonna be a real huge part. Um, if it's an STL because it's using all the triangular mesh in there, it will be really, uh, depending on how big the part is, it could be really slow in response. So um, you can do it. Um, just be careful on how big the part is and how, you know, what the uh, megabytes are on there because um, it will be really slow in response sometimes on there. I hope that answered your question there, Robert. <coughs> All right, so I'll come back in and I'll wait for his answer there. Um, so I'm going to go back into Create 3D. I'm basically going to recreate this almost um, without the holes on the front or anything. Uh, but I am going to use a revolve on here. So in the revolve, I'm just it, just what it is. It's going to revolve the part there. Uh, by default, it's 180 in rotation. That's just what you see in there. I'm going to go ahead and make this 360. Now. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do a couple of different ways of, on this thing here. Uh, the first one is going to be uh, selecting just this geometry from here to here, just to see what we get. So when you do a select in, um, on here, and this is going to work for every single one of these in here, I'm going to look at this line. If I select the line right here, my direction arrow is going to be going in the wrong direction. If I go past the halfway mark, it goes in this direction because I wanted to follow this profile right up here. So I'm going to zoom out and bring it over. And I'm going to hold my shift key down past the halfway mark or near the intersection. And there we go. So you can see what it did there. It did exactly what I told you. Now, if I had a line going down right to Z0, this would all be covered up, which I still can do by using the planar surface, picking that edge, and then I would just have to stitch it together. Uh, not too worried about that right now. Again, I can do the same thing on this side right here, and I'll make it basically a watertight uh, seal there. So I got something like that. So I'm going to undo those, 
And again, I'm going to do the revolve one more time here, but this time I'm going to hold, I'm going to left click here and then I'm going to hold my shift key down right here. Whoops. There we go. And you can see what it did there. It made our part again. Not worried about the hex portion of it. I may want to come in. There we go. And every line right here that you see, that is a uh, geometry break. So, you know, I had a, from here to here is a break, here to here, here to here, and so on in there. Uh, so that's all you really see on there. But you can see with the Revolve, I basically just recreated my uh, one model without the hex, though. And they're all made all in a circle. I'd have to go in and do some other modifications in there, which I'm not too worried about. Uh, just going ahead and uh, just revolving that um, on there. Um, next one is our uh, sweep. So with the sweep, it creates a profile chain along a user-defined path on there. So what I like to use on a lot of these is in our help file, you got uh, all these different um, examples here. And the one I'm looking for is sweep, sweep surface right there. So basically, I got two chains I need to select. One is our uh, profile, and the X other one is our uh, path. So first thing you need to do, and it could be any geometry for this sweep, okay? Uh, just this happens to be a circle. I need to pick an attachment point. So I'm going to hover over that circle, get all my snap points. I'm going to do this one in the center here. Now my sweet profile, again, it could be whatever you want it to be. In this case, it's just a zero. It could be a half a circle. It could be, you know, a wave or some sort of organic um, uh, profile. So I'm just going to hold my shift key down and left click. And then my path. I wanted to go all the way around, so I'm going to take this arc right here, go past the halfway mark, because I wanted to go this direction towards the end, hold my shift key down and left click, and there we go. So I got my um, sweet path there on that. Any questions with that? And again, it's, you know, it could be any organic shape that you want. You can use this as, you know, um, a um, basically a like a gasket or something in there, uh, whatever you want. Uh, and it's shaped, and it could just be totally flat, too. So it could be, you know, um, just out of, you know, just out of fun here. Um I'm just going to close that out. Oh, uh, let's open up a new window. And again, I'm just picking up things from my, uh, let's see, let's use a star, for example. Uh, let's see, let's do four and, I don't know, um, 25. Nope. Let's go 65. Yeah, something like that. That looks pretty good. Uh, let's do a four-point star there, something like that uh, on there. And I'm just going to say OK and cancel. And let's see. I'm going to go to circle. Um, let's do 0 to 180. And I'm going to make that diameter 0.2. And I'm just going to place it right out here. Now, again, I'm going to go back into Create 3D, go to Sweep. My attachment point, I'm going to choose this right here. And now my Sweep, uh, oh, so now I'm Sweep Profile. I'm going to come here. I'm going to left click, hold my Shift key down. And then left click, there goes my sweep profile. And now my path, left click. And I got this on the wrong side there. So again, I may end up, uh, let's see, my sweep path. I'm going to just come right up here, hit the X all, and I'm going to try this, doing this direction. Oops, still on the wrong side there. No big deal. Oh, I got to slip that, move that around. No big deal. 
So again, come on, there we go. The way I made my circle, so I should have done it on the other side. I should have done uh, 180 and 360 on there, or I could have just rotated that thing around, so it would have worked. So you can see I did any organic shape on there and just did something uh, to get that. So that's what the sweep there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Cross section. Uh, let's see. I'm going to undo you. Mm, I'm going to use the example one because that's probably a better one there. Uh, with the cross section here, again, um, it just uh, allows you to create uh, chains, a uh, series of selection here. Left click, hold your key down and left click. Um, so with cross section there, if I choose, you know, just left click, come down here, hold my shift key down, left click, and then it's just a uh, just a series of back and forth, and you can see what it's doing. It's creating a surface across that cross section there. Whoops. There we go. And do the same thing, you know, and then, so I'm just gonna start here. And you can see what it's doing there. It's just adding it on. And you can see it kind of distorts a little bit because it's not finished yet. Again, just a series of, and you can see it's now it's coming up and finishing off. So it's a nice, uh, matter of uh, left click, hold your shift key down and left click. And then there it is right there. So you got a series of uh, organic uh, 2D geometry uh, creating one complete surface there. Uh, same thing with uh, three edge there. Uh, again, I'm just going to come up here. Three edge surface. It's just uh, picking a series of uh, chains using three. So again, it's all in the direction of your cut too. So it doesn't matter if I go clockwise or counterclockwise. As long as I do a left click, hold my shift key down and left click. Left click, hold my shift key down and left click. And same thing right here. And it creates that surface there. Same thing with four edge here. And you can see the image is just basically the same. And don't do your hold your shift key down because you won't get anything. If you don't see a preview, you did something wrong. And when you're doing any of the change three, four, or multi patch, uh, again, Make sure, and again, I'm holding my shift key down too early, so it's a left click, hold your shift key down and left click. So you can see even the pros have issues too uh, on there. And same thing with multi-patch here. It's a series of, you know, so, uh, creating a service through multi-chains. Again, left click, hold your shift key down and left click. And again, you guys got this in your software too. If you go to the Bobcat Cam data folder, C drive, Bobcat Cam data folder. Um, uh, whatever version you're running and then examples and they're all right in there for you guys. Um, Let's see, okay, and you cancel that one. So that creates a, you know, a multi-patch there uh, with that. Uh, the next ones we got are our skin and ruled surfaces here. So with skin, that's kind of our most common one here. Uh, let me go ahead and hit cancel and open this up here. So let's go to skin. Uh, with skin, you got to choose uh, cross section, 
and then you're going to pick your rail curves. Now, what consists of what and what, what, and what here? Um, usually your cross sections are going to be your shorter sides. Uh, your rail curves are going to be your longer sides on here. Uh, so with that, I'm going to choose these two circles here for my uh, cross section. So again, it's a left click, hold your shift key down and left click. Now I'm going to come to the other end and make sure I go in the same direction. Left click, hold my shift key down and left click. Now my rail curves, this side's going to be pretty easy. It's going to be a because it, it's one continuous arc here. So I'm going to left click, hold my shift key down and left click. Now this one is going to be a little more difficult here. So I'm going to take this arc or line right here. I'm going to go just near the intersection to the next one. And I'm going to left click. That establishes my direction. Now I'm going to come down to the other end, past the halfway mark here, hold my shift key down and left click. And you can see it made my surface. Now I'm going to cancel out of this one and I'm going to go back into it again here and just show you what happens if you use this as your cross section. You're still going to create the same thing, but you saw how the other one was nice and smooth. And then my rail curves. You can see how this one, it's actually, each one of those is where the break is on this line right here. So it still creates the same thing. It just, it depends. This makes it a little bit um, not as smooth as the other one on there. Still created the uh, surface, still one surface um, on there. <clears throat> and that's the same thing with the ruled here. Um, with the ruled surface, it's two parallel lines or arcs uh, that are uh, on there. You don't have a closed section in there like you would in a skin. With the parallel, our rule surface basically, in here, if I go left click, again, and then down here at the end, hold my shift key down and left click. Whoops, what did I do? Yeah, let's do an X all. Left click. And do the same thing on this side here. Left click. There you go. Creates a ser series of um, surfaces, basically. Uh, but it is still considered one solid. Now, you can make this into a spline or, you know, use a continuous... Uh, um, arc or something in there um, or you know what's the other one we got in here spiral we can make a spiral out of it do the same thing and it would make a nice you know just a nice surface in there if you wanted to um, with that so you got different options in there uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and close a lot of this stuff out before I lose There we go. All right, so next one is swung in here, and that's just basically slinging a, um, a geometry around a uh, known uh, area. So swung here. So you got your um, x y plane, which is this right here, uh, and then your trajectory what you're swinging around. So you got your profile chain, which is your, again, hold your shift key down and left click. And then your profile chain, this happens to just be one spline. And I can either go around the trajectory curve, which is our X, Y plane, or our profile path, which is in a Z um, on there. So you got a couple of different ways you can do that if you need to. Uh, other things we got in here, um, and this is for, uh, well, anybody doing 3D scanning here, we can shell. So let me see. Um, and sorry about that. I forgot to turn my phone off there. Um, 
shelling. So if you guys are doing any 3D uh, uh, scan, uh, scanning there or using a 3D printer, uh, the scan's real nice. Uh, let's see. Let me just open up a new window here, and I'm just going to make it real simple here. I'm going to go into shell. Whoops. Let's make our cube first. And let's go three by three. That should be fine. And we're going to go into shell here. So I'm going to pick the whole solid. And we can see a preview. And you can see what it's doing here. It's just shelling it here. So it's going to be pretty full um, through here. Um, but inside the middle here, it's going to be empty. And again, uh, um, so yeah, this might help you out there too, Robert. Uh, I was just looking at your previous question. That's why I didn't say anything specific there um, on there. But thanks. Um, so, yeah, this allows you to uh, create, you know, um, a shelling here where you don't have, film, you know, if you're going to cut this rectangle out, basically, um, it's not going to be um, full foam in, in here. It's going to be empty. So, basically, the walls right here from an eighth are all going to be, um, let me just okay that. And I'm going to hit T as in transparent on there. So you can see, you know, uh, actually it's all solid in the center here. And again, that's something that you can, um, let me see. I'm going to hit cancel here and go back into shelling and edit that. So show preview. So again, you can change this to whatever you want in there. Um, you know, 0.5. Basically, you know, whatever you want to do to shell it, and you could do inside and out also uh, in there. The other thing you got here is split. So let's see. I'm going to split this in the corner here, but first I need to go to rectangular planer, and I'm going to go 12 by 12. Yeah, let's make you zero. Uh, let's not make that too crazy. Let's go six by six. Then we're going to OK that. Now, what I need to do is go into utilities. I'm going to rotate this thing. I'm just going to take that surface. And let's see, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And I'm going to rotate it in Z 45. There we go. Perfect. So, you can see here, and it's not too perfect here. Actually, that's not too bad. So, with this split, I'm going to go back into Create 3D, and I'm going to go to Split here. So, the first thing you need to do is select your solid that you want to split. That's that right there. Notice I'm moving my mouse out of the way. Um, if I left-click on it and leave my mouse on there, it stays that pink color. So, I don't know if it's selected, so sometimes you'll end up, left clicking a couple of times. I just got into a habit and I was told this a long time ago to um, uh, move your mouse out of the way so it turns red. Then select your uh, splitting surface which is this right here and then OK and cancel. Now what I usually like to do is just go into select mode and then hover over my solid that I split. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to just delete you because I don't need you anymore. And now I can go in here and let's see. Translate and let's just move you. Out of the way. And you can see there goes my uh, split along with uh, my, um, what do you call it, there, shelling. So you can see I made a quarter inch in here. That's the thickness of my wall, basically. And then everything in the center here is open. So vice versa, what I said there um, on that. So if you were 3D printing it, uh, you only have a quarter inch of a wall in there in this case, or you can use, you know, less or more on there uh, with that. 
Any questions or anything so far? Uh, let's see. The, uh, Michael's got a question here. If you draw a part and drill and tap a hole, can you show threads in a 3D model? No, not in a direct model, in Bobcat at least. Um, there are ways around that. Um, are you talking about for like 3D printing? You want to... Okay, so what you would do, and, and I'll, I'll show you how to do that later uh, this afternoon when we get into um, tool pathing here. So we can, you can draw threads in Bobcat. It's really difficult. I still can't even do it. Anyways, the easy way to do that is to uh, create a tapping. We'll just, I'm just going to go with a tapping operation right now. Um, when you go into simulation, you can save that once you're done with this, running the simulation. It does a tapping in there. You can save that STL model out um, in there. And I'll show you when we get into that this afternoon on there, Michael. Uh, but, yeah, you can do it. There is a way to do it. So you can um, – I'll put it in your uh, uh, 3D printer there on that. So, yeah, I'll definitely – cool. Um, so any questions with the, any of the 3D modeling here? Again, uh, you can use any one of these options in here. Um, we got, you know, extend on there. It allows you to extend a natural surface, basically. Um, if you got like a curve or some sort of uh, organic in there or multiples, you really can't do um, on there. It will, sometimes it will give you options. Uh, see, that's not a natural boundary there. It's got to be some sort of natural boundary, which would be something that you just created. So, you know, you can choose what direction you want to go into. Um, on that, uh, you can see, let's see, let's come back up here, picking this edge. And again, I'm not doing anything pretty with this. Uh, in there. Uh, so and then you got your break and trim basically um, on there uh, with the break and trim. Let's see, do I have an example? Nope, I don't have an example, a good, good example of um, that. Um, on there, so, um, but there's other ways we could do that. Um, with that, with the uh, break and trim, it allows you to break a surface uh, if you got 2D geometry. Uh, so, ooh, actually, this one might work here. So, with the break here. Select your solid or surface, which is that. Select your breaking curve, which is that 2D geometry right there. Say OK and cancel, and I hit S on the keyboard. Now when I go in here, there's my break and um, on there. So I definitely can do that if I need to. Untrim uh, allows you to uh, untrim surfaces, basically. Um, so I can take a surface, untrim it, and it will just uh, untrim my surfaces there. Uh, a lot of times you could do that with, uh, let's see, I got a example here, demo files, like, oh, maybe not. And it's just picking a surface there. Basically, it's just cutting that surface on there. Now, with this set here, uh, let's see. Uh, Rubber had a question there. I had to cut a helix, uh, white the threads profile. Um, I'll come back to your question there. It's probably the same thing that uh, Michael asked there. Uh, I'll show you at the, in a little bit there on that, Robert, uh, with the threading on that. Um, yeah, so with this, so intersection to curve, uh, break surface, basically what I'm doing here is I just did an untrim on there just to cover up this hole here or this uh, uh, inside cut here, but I don't need to actually get rid of all this in here. This is where I can do an intersection to curve 
where I can pick my uh, first surface and then my second surface and create a 2D geometry, which allows me now to, and again, I probably want this in different um, layers here, to break the surface. So I can pick my solid, and then I can pick my 2D geometry. So again, I might have to come in and, let's see, break surface, see if I can do this. Ooh, it did it. Okay. So I'm going to okay that and cancel it. Hit S there. Uh, okay. Not a problem there. Yeah, so what Michael or Robert was asking, it was the same thing that Michael asked too. Same way. And I'm going to get into that there when we get into um, the cutting this afternoon. Uh, so basically, intersection of curve was basically taking either a solid or a surface uh, on here, which just happened to be um, this whole solid here. Now it's just picking the surface because it broke it. And then picking this top surface, which created a 2D geometry around here um, on that. So, And it also did the holes and inside there, which I wasn't too worried about. Uh, so now I can come in here and... Um, break that surface, which it's not allowing me to do. So I want to pick that surface and then my breaking, and I did it the wrong way, would be around there. Say OK and cancel. So now I got my break right there and I can delete that if I need to, if I needed to cover up that hole uh, right there. So, any questions or anything so far? All right. So, let, yeah, let's kind of move on there. Um, so, next thing we're going to look at here, we pretty much did everything in Create 3D. Now, it's just a matter of uh, going to the CAM side here. So, in the CAM tab up here, we got all this in the ribbon here. So looking at the, uh, from the far right, we're going to go to the left. Uh, we got post encryption. Post encryption is basically um, you can encrypt your post. Now, I haven't come, um, you know, in contact with anybody that's actually used this out in the field, meaning you guys out there. Um, but you can encrypt your posts. If you, you know, you got guys that, you know, like to go into post processor, um, uh, like to mess around with it, screw things up, or try to fix stuff. Even if you guys want, you don't want people to see what you did, you can encrypt your post, either the whole post or you can encrypt sections of in there. And we got a video online in YouTube that will show you how to use this. Excuse me. Our posting guys will sometimes use this, um, especially if you guys got, you know, uh, scripting done, something that you guys paid for that's not standard in the post processor. Uh, they'll, um, they'll encrypt your post uh, with that. So, you, you know, this, use this very carefully and wisely because um, if you do encrypt a post, there's no way in an unencrypted. So you have to save an unencrypted somewhere else on there. A lot of times you can put it on a cloud drive uh, so, uh, or a flash drive or something. Uh, but save it elsewhere because once you encrypt it, there's no way for any of us to unencrypt it, basically. Uh, so be, use that wisely. Use it carefully. The next thing over is our external applications where we have... Um, Mach 3, Predator Editor, and C Editor. These, um, Predator Editor, we do not use. We haven't used since version 31, uh, but if you do have anything dirty and below that's on this com on the same computer that you have 31 uh, through 34 on, you may still have access to it through the newer software. Uh, we phased it out, basically. I don't even use it anymore, uh, but I still have access to it. Um, on there, we use the NC editor, um, and that's our newer external application that we use. And basically, you know, for lack of better terms, it's a glorified notepad um, on there. 
um, you can you are in it's really nice and we'll go into that as soon as we get some uh, 3d toolpath on there just show you the code and stuff we'll go in there it is color coordinated we're in the predator editor you had to have at least the pro version to have color combinations where all your X were one color Y's were another color raw text was another color so on Mach 3, if you bought Mach 3 through Bobcat, only through Bobcat only, you will have access to the Mach 3 on there. Um, if you bought, if you run in Mach 3 that you bought third party, you will not have access to it here. Now, with that said, I'm going to jump back into our uh, file and um, settings here. And under customized ribbon here. So under cam external application if you don't ever want to see those two again go under button group uh, you can uh, delete if you want hit apply and okay and they go away I don't think I did it for the Mach 3 um, on there so again under settings uh, customize ribbons And if you want to bring one back over again, uh, you just have to find it here, which should be alphabetical order, which I don't, there we are, Mach 3, add, there it is, apply, and you can see it showed up right there. And now it's under a uh, different size. You can also, you know, change the size on uh, certain things also if you need to. Just a little thing I'll show you. Um, so moving over to our libraries here, not going to worry about the knowledge base right now because not everybody has that. Uh, material library. Uh, this has all our different materials in here. We do not carry any wood groups um, on there. Uh, where is the command or pizza? Haven't figured that one out yet. We are working with development on that one there, Mark. <laughs> Order pizza uh, on there. Uh, and I'm going to be a little more smart. I like if you got a wife, she'll order the pizza for you. So there's your command right there. <laughs> Bad. Don't listen to me um, on that. Um, material library. So, again, we don't have any wood groups in here. You can create your own group. You can call it, you know, um, wood group and um, set one up here. And again, you can set your own uh, material too. You can add a material, you can call it, you know, birch or pine, you know, I'll just do pine for example. Uh, you can change your um, tool material from like carbide steel or high speed steel here at EUC, which is the default. You can change it to carbide only if you want, or you can have carbide added in here if you want. If you know the SFM for, you know, feeds and speeds, tapping, your chip loads, there, you can set those all up. You can customize, you know, whatever you want in there for different tool paths. Now, this is just for milling and milling only. Uh, let me go by default or when you first load in the software. Um, let's see, carbon steel, I think it is. Carbon steel eight, uh, 1018 is the default material. Uh, you can see in here, carbide, insert. Uh, high-speed steel. You'll notice all the numbers are changing. Um, now, again, if you know all this information, you can go in and change it if you want um, on there. You don't have to. Um, these, all the feeds and speeds that are in our library, tool library, are all based off of material here. And there's other ways you can change it, which I'll show you here in a bit uh, with that. So, again, if you know all the changes, you can set them up here if you want um, on there. And you can set, you know, what as a different material as your default. You can set up different uh, favorites. You can add a favorites in here if you need to. Um, there it is right there. So you can see carbon steel went to my favorite. If I went to plastics and changed it to uh, polypropylene right there, moved to favorites. You can see now I got polypropylene set to my favorites also. So material library now. The feeds and speeds that we get do set up in here uh, for the material library, which will be also uh, in your feeds and speeds for the tool library, um, may not be right for your uh, machine. So, again, if you know all the information, go ahead and set those up. 
Um, like I said, our, our development guys, when version 24 was ending and we went into 25 and went into this uh, different uh, user setup here, they just opened up a catalog one day and put in the feeds and speeds now. I'm going to say it's like an 80-20 split, and you've probably heard me say that a million times in the past. 80% um, of the guys say our feeds and speeds aren't good, and I get it. All the machines nowadays you know, are moving up there, and you got different um, – feeds and speeds that you can use, but 20% of the guys, you know, um, still will use whatever we got in their, their good there. Um, oh, I, and I think I just answered your question there, Robert. Um, like I said, it was our uh, development guys that uh, just put in those feeds and speeds one day, and it was, you know, what, nine, ten years ago now. Um, so, Again, those may not be the feeds and speeds that you want to use. Um, I'm going to leave that up to you guys. But there's other ways we I'll show you here when we get into the tool library where you can change them also. Uh, thread libraries. This is where we keep all our tabbing and threads options in here. So you got UNF, UNC, you know, whatever you want to do. You can add your own threads. You can modify your any of the threads that you want to utilize. Uh, so they're all based right here. Adapters, not going to worry about those because that's uh, more for the mill, uh, mill turn live tooling guys. Mill holders, again, if you want to set this up, it's not critical really for three access. Uh, what we do uh, have uh, Cat 40s, Cat 50s, and um, BT 40s here. So again, you can add your own arbor and holder if you want, or you can edit one of these. So this is uh, looking at the arbor here. So you got cone and uh, cylinder. You can set those up, set your different parameters. You can add a cylinder if you want, whatever you want to be. Do you can basically modify it the way you want, uh, or you can add your own uh, tool library. So this is the default one. So remember that you're going to see, you know, lathe, um, generic, laser, plasma, water jet. We're mostly just going to, and then you got your mill and drills right here. So all your drilling operations, center drills, uh, spiral, taps, uh, counterboard, uh, chamfer tools, reamers, boring, that kind of thing. Uh, milling, we got all your different milling um, tools right here. You got your ML rust, finished chamfer mills, uh, corner rounding threads, uh, single point threads, those type of things, V tools, tapers. Um, so again, you can modify add any of the tools. You can add your own tools right here. If you click on the add, it'll show up at the bottom. You can change the tool parameters. So in here, you can, this is in a modified state. So you got your uh, tool label. You can modify any one of our tools or you can add your own tools in there. Um, you can set up any of the parameters right here. Change the tool material in here, carbide, insert, or, you know, custom. You can assign a tool holder if you want to. You can also down here uh, change your feeds and speeds. So if you leave this unchecked, we're going to look at the system, at the material that you're using, and base it off of that. Okay. If you uncheck this and then put in your own feeds and speeds, uh, let me go ahead and go to my default one here. Is that it? Oh. Let me go to ML Rough here, and I got a 3 8 Really? Oh, maybe I don't have it set up in 34. Anyways, I had uh, like the 3 8 here. Let's see. Let me. There we go. So I got a 3 8 standard here. I changed it to carbide. Um, because I'm from a wood plastics background, I'm... I just use different feeds and speeds. I, I was able to run at a max 18,000 RPM. Uh, plunge, I just always left at 30 um, on there because that was just a nice movement down. If I use, like, I actually left it at, like, 10 or 1 at some point, and they just, like, creeping down. Uh, cutting feed rate, uh, I know on my machine I was able to go at one point uh, 220 cutting feed rate, but I never went past 200. Um, on there, and those are just the, my max on there. So uh, whenever I pull up this 3.8 standard here, uh, it doesn't matter what material I'm using. 
it's going to look at these feeds and speeds on there uh, with that. So, again, if you know what you're going to use for feeds and speeds, you can preload them right here if you want uh, on that, or we could do it on the fly, which we'll get into in a little bit uh, on that um, in there. So, yeah, you could definitely uh, – set it up this way and i've done that and then and i just did it with the one tool so you can definitely modify add your own tools um on there any questions or anything so far all right so moving on down the road here we got our dms defaults this allows when we go into the machine strategy of the uh, toolpath wizard there um we got different options in here. So I'm going to look at the uh, middle three axis templates. So strategy one, two, three, and four are set up. These are your defaults in there. Again, if you want, you can change them. If you do strategy one, or let's see, let's do, that looks fine. Strategy four. It's uh, set up with the two advanced roughs. If I wanted to, I can get rid of one of them. And I can run, you know, maybe, let's say, yeah, equal distance and then do a pencil. So if it, that's the kind of strategy I want to use, a lot of times I can set that up in a different strategy uh, in there. Um, so, yeah, you can set it. So when we go into the machine strategy and I look at strategy four, it's going to have the advanced rough, equal distance, and pencil, not the two advanced rough, equal distance, and parameter or pencil in there anymore. So you can set that up the way you want to look at it. Uh, a lot of times in like laser plasma water jet, um, I'll just have them go into uh, mill to the two axis template, the profile one, and take out the uh, profile rough. Because all they need is a profile finish and just cut around their part and they're done. Cutting conditions are where you can set up all your drill pecking, uh, center drill operations, your chamfer and counter bore, um, or you can just do it on the default again whatever you want. So like in the packing increment, it's always going to be 50%. So whatever that depth is, you know, you can always set that on the fly, which I usually do. Or if you want to set it here, you definitely can set all this up. This is all stuff that you could do later on in the, um, when you get used to the software. Um, or you can just, you know, get used to, you can get used to the software first and then come in and change all these parameters. Um, been here, what, nine years now. I still do just leave everything at default as much as possible and just go in and uh, change it on the fly. Uh, let's see, I'll come back to current settings. So job templates, if it's going to be the same process that you're going to be doing over and over with the same tool paths uh, on there, you can set up the job templates. I've come across a couple of guys, mostly uh, the ones that I've come across. I know there's more out there. Uh, we're um, plasma guys because uh, they're doing the same thing over and over again. So they just, uh, you know, they got the same material set up and they don't have to, you know, go through everything. And all they really got to do at the end is select their geometry and compute all the tool paths because it's all there uh, by setting up a template on there. The stock may be a little bit different, but other than that, it's pretty much the same setup. New job, which is what we're going to do all the time. Um, you got your job type here. You got milling, turning, mill turn, wire EDM. Depending on what you guys got on your license, you'll see everything here. It may be grayed out or uh, highlighted like mine is. We're, both, we're only going to be looking at milling today. Uh, we got our machine that you can choose from. Again, yours is going to be a little bit different than mine, what you got in here for the milling uh, side of it. And then if you want to set it up as a uh, default parameter, you can definitely can, our template. Um, and again, when we get in here, uh, I'm going to jump back to current settings here in a second. Um, when we go into uh, CAM, new job, always click on stock wizard. Don't click OK. It will present like it did a stock wizard in there, but once you could try to um, do one toolpath, it's going to show up an error on the screen and say, hey, you didn't do a stock wizard. We don't know what we're going to be cutting. It'll click you right back into the stock definition page. So whenever you go to new job, always click on stock wizard and follow the parameters all the way through. Um, let me go ahead and cancel on there. Current settings. 
this is where we set up your uh, machine and your posting and uh, other definitions in here. Again, I'm not going to worry about the coolant down below here. Uh, we're going to be looking at BC3XML. That's just the one I'm going to be using. But you can own, you got Centroid. Now, we don't know what, what, what machine you're using right now. So you're going to see in here, in the defaults, like uh, all our mill turn machines, laser, or laser, excuse me, those type uh, wire EDM stuff in here. Um, this is all default in here. So again, I'm just going to use the BC3X mill. You can modify it. You can add your own machine. If you want to add your own machine, we do have um, a... Um, YouTube on how to set that up in there. And let's see, Travis got a question there. Uh, how do you define your material and what machine you use? I'll show you that after uh, when we're done with the, uh, when we go through the stock wizard on there. Uh, you can't do it in this one here. Uh, this is just default setups here on that. So yeah, we'll look at that there in a minute. Cool. Um, so, again, you can add your own. Um, you can set up your maximum tool, your rapid, your spindle speed, and cutting feed rate on here. Even if you downloaded a post processor from our website, always come in here and make sure everything's set up. Um, I always had to come in here and change at least my spindle and cutting feed rate uh, on there. Um, like I said, I can run higher than what the, everything's set up for. Um, and again, our posting guys don't know exactly what you're running either um, on there. So I always overdid this because if I if this was I can run you know my spindle speed at eighteen thousand. Um, if this was set at ten thousand in the code, it'd come out as ten thousand on there. So you got to make sure that's all set up. Machine definitions again. If you don't have Machine Sim Pro, um, we're going to have a basic setup in here. In fact, let me just jump into I think. Um, let me pull up uh, Haas, yeah, Haas here. So in here, there's no geometry selected. I got Machine Sim Pro. Some of you guys may have it out there. Uh, Machine Sim Pro, where you have your kinematics of your machine, and then we, we'll set it up in the software for you. Um, that's what that's for, uh, basically. Again, you can come in here and set this up, you know, with you know, whatever your table parameters are or uh, machine parameters are. Uh, so what's your minimax for your um, limits on your machine uh, on there? What direction is a positive or negative? Again, I'm not going to get in too much on that one. We do have videos on YouTube if you go to, if you type in the search under YouTube, um, machine definitions for Bobcat. They will show you. Um, we got a bunch of different videos for three, four, and five axis on there. Um, so again, this is uh, the kinematics of your machine. Posting, you're going to want to come into the posting section here. Again, if we down, if you downloaded a post processor or possibly got one from our post department, we don't know what your file extension is. We always default it to a .nc, uh, but if you're running .tap file, .tap, or a .txt, or in some cases a .gcd, you're going to have to set that there. Want to make sure your uh, locations for your post processor is set up correctly and your NC file path. Uh, program number, don't even worry about that. If you're using sequent numbers in there, you can uh, set it up. Uh, on your post as far as uh, sequence numbers like 2 to 1, 5 to 5, you know, whatever you're using, uh, 1 to 1s, N01, N02, that type of thing. Absolute incremental, again, that's set up in your post. Don't worry about setting it up here because uh, we it will not, it will come out, if you click on incremental, it's still going to come out as absolute. That's what our posts are set up for. If you do need an incremental uh, post, let our post guys know. Um, they'll get you uh, one set up with just incremental uh, on there. Uh, if you're using a sub-programming, you can output sub-program numbers. Um, if you have, uh, Haas is good for this one, uh, Machine Dog Lap, uh, Machine uh, does dog like rapid moves. Um, it used to be like a scripting code that we would have to put in. Now we got it um, cemented into the software here. So if you guys have issues uh, with dog like rapids on your machine, 
check that off and then it'll spit it out in the code properly. And then all this is all basically for the four and five axis here. And then here, if you're posed to set up for it, you can output um, comments here, um, raw text if you need to uh, with that. And then you got your multi-axis posting if you need to utilize that. And, Back, don't even touch this page. It's uh, mostly for our, uh, posting guys. We'll, you know, tech and training guys will come in here once in a while and may end up um, changing something uh, if we need to. Uh, but then again, we're going to go right back to it also uh, to the original uh, if we need to um, on that. Any questions or anything so far? All right, so the next thing we got is, again, our new job. Again, set up your uh, machine that you want to use. Whatever your default one is, always keep that uh, uh, showing up here first. Uh, from there, I'm going to go ahead and hit Stock Wizard. So here we got our workpiece. Our workpiece is our solid model. Again, you can window pick it if you need to. You'll see it all set up here. This is going to show in our simulation under a workpiece. You don't have to select it if you don't want to, and it's only if you have a solid model. If you're working, if you don't select it and you got the solid model on your CAD screen at the time you go into simulation, it will utilize the CAD model, solid model, as a workpiece anyways if you want to. Uh, from there, we'll go ahead and hit the next button. We get into our stock definition page. With 3D modeling, if you got a 3D model on your screen here, it's going to pick up the overall X, Y, and Z. And you can see that indicates right there. I can also use a cylinder, wireframe geometry if I need to utilize it, a solid model. If, um, you know, if I want to import a solid model, I can definitely use that, STL model, or I can revolve it. We'll just look at here. Uh, if I need to set any offsets, I can definitely do that in the X, Y, and Z in there and I'm just doing one inch in all directions here just to show you on that. So basically now if I look at this, it's floating in the middle of our screen there. Uh, origin is the is if um uh, excuse me, coordinate system, stock orientation. If my um um part is way out in the middle of space, I can uh, definitely utilize the origin in there. Uh, where my stock is going to be set up, and I can change the direction if I need to uh, in there. Not worried about that today. Uh, let's see. Let's hit the coordinate stock. If I hit my next button, then I get all these little snap points. This is my uh, machine zero or part zero set up. You can see I got all these snap points showing up. You can see it in the uh, screen in there. Right down in the center, I got one in the center. So if I click on origin, I can click on the center of my stock, or I can pick the, whoop, let me zoom in on there, the top of my stock if I want, or I can pick a corner. I can also change it around if I needed to by using the arrows, or if there's a specific direction I want to go to, I could definitely do that on there. So I can do zero and make my Z go down that direction on there. So I can move that all around if I need to. Um, let's see, I'm going to reset stock coordinates here. And I'm just going to place it right, I'm going to come back up here at origin and place right there. Uh, work offset, and moving on down, we got our work offset here. Work offset is G54 is work offset 1. We got G55, 56, 57, uh, 58, and so on in there. That's a default. Uh, so when you go into any tool path, it could be drilling, operation, tapping, whatever it may be, uh, two axis, three axis. When we get into the posting page, that work offset is going to show up there. Right now, it's just going to be 1. I'm just going to use defaults in there. Uh, pick a point and work offset Z. This is if you have Machine Sim Pro. Um, when we design your um, machine for you, uh, it's always set at the XYZ zero here. So 
a lot of times when you're drawing parts or you got parts in there, it's going to show up as being inside the uh, machine. Um, this is where we can alleviate that and I can say, you know, let's say pick a point and I want this to be above right in the center there. So you can see there's X, Y, and Z is 275. Now I won't be gouging in the part. Um, what it would be if I if you don't have machine set pro you should be fine uh, clearance that's safety of your tool moving out to position or back to the home position once it rapids and feeds out of your part uh, it's going to move up one inch more above the part and go to the home position if it's coming out the position it's going to be one inch above your part and it's going to drop down into the uh, rabbit and feed move there uh, for you that's a nominal number that we have in there at one inch uh, from there, um, if you want to change it, go ahead and do that. Um, if not, just leave it as is, and then you'll notice you don't have any more arrows pointing to the right, and we just click OK. And that's with the stock wizard. Any questions or anything so far? Oh, let's see. Mark's got a question in there. Uh, this is where you try to run the cam and on the machine uh, with no tool and dry run. Yeah. Exactly. You can do that. Now, again, I'm not too worried about the uh, setup or anything as far as doing mill two and three axis. Uh, so when you do get into three and four axis, it will make a difference on there. Um, any, uh, any other questions or anything? All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, stop here for right now. Uh, we'll, go ahead and we'll come back at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and then we'll just uh, we'll look at the um, uh, the current settings there s section, and then uh, we'll go into some toolpath there. All right, guys, we'll see you guys here in a bit. Talk to you soon.